and welcome back to Banzer's Yard. Today we are going to paint this uh, brickwork. It's the brick that we're really concentrating on. Every time um, we put this on Instagram, there's always lots of questions, so I thought I'd try and sort of cover some of the questions here. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy watching this. So the retaining wall we have printed on our resin printer and uh, it's been designed in a thing called Shaper 3D, nice piece of software which we can use on uh, iPads and uh, Surface Pros so you can design with a stylus in your fingers which is great and the uh, the retaining wall has been painted in um, just got a car primer um, a couple of really light coats and then we're going to um, do the brickwork in Vallejo red leather so uh, this is the model color so with the rob model colors you need to uh, add thinner and um, it's obviously got to be proper acrylic thinner um, and so we've mixed up about 50 50 maybe just a little bit uh, wetter than that actually because we don't want to fill in any of the uh, details of the, the, where the gaps are between the bricks where the mortar would go the uh, the spacing is about 0.2 of a millimeter so it's quite fine and would be very easy to uh, to clog that with um, with too heavy paint and lose the detail. So just a couple of light coats. Let's say thin down, probably just a bit more than 50/50. That's why it's not covering, um, you know, straight away. And while we've still got some left, we're just going to add a touch of black. It's just to kind of add a random sort of shading um, on on the sort of the main areas of the brickwork. So if you look at brickwork, it's going to be all different colours, um, unless it's a, a very sort of modern building. Um, but anything probably more than 20 years old or so, the bricks were never ever the same colour, and there's going to be different um, sh uh, shades and tones all over the uh, the wall. So um, with the original red leather, uh, that's it there in the middle. We're going to use a bit of black and um, and a sand colour. Uh, I think this is the Iraqi sand, or it could be um, some. I think it's stone actually. But anyway, it's just a a colour. You know, it can be whatever sort of shade you like. And we've got the three together, and we can mix and match them. So add a bit of black, and that goes obviously darker. Uh, we can add in the uh, the stone and then it's going to get lighter uh, and then we've got sort of all the shades in between really so uh, the world's our, our oyster as far as uh, these these colours go now bricks are going to be you know infinite amounts of shades all over so you can it, it, you don't need to be consistent um, it's just a matter of uh, you know getting a bit of paint on your brush as long as it's different to the red that's already on there and then just paint in in um, random bricks now being random is uh, is always quite difficult um, because you tend to end up creating a pattern by trying to be random um, or you you'll get you know a, a kind of um, a number of bricks that you want to paint together and then you'll repeat the pattern somewhere further down the line and you know real brickwork isn't really like that you can cover as many bricks as you like it depends how much time you've got on your hands um, I'm not going to do that many there's only a small piece but I'm still not going to do that many a lot of these are going to be covered with other things as you've seen in the in the in the beginning uh, in the opening shots so this is the sand colour so it's got a little bit of red still mixed in with that and we're just going to go around the whole piece um, some of the, the um, sort of ones at the corner are always good to, to kind of get in um, because it kind of continues around the corner so it's always nice and then obviously don't forget the ones at the top as well uh, so those those finishing ones um, that's it that's the top there um, so we're going to do those um, a few of those as well now on this piece we have got um, 
some damage so we're going to paint those as well so for our decals we need to um, get the surface a bit smoother because it's all painted in a kind of a matte um, colors at the moment and we're using a thing called clear which is a floor polish now you can't get clear anymore um, it, they've changed the formulation it's called pledge Johnson's pledge floor polish now there's different versions and if you go online on YouTube there's people who you know do lots of comparison between the different um, different types of floor polish um, you don't need to use that you can use a gloss spray um, from a can or uh, from an airbrush whatever you choose to do but just it gives it a smooth surface and it just allows the uh, the decals to um, to bond and not get that sort of silver in effect where they don't um, adhere properly so we are we're going to get a selection of uh, decals or decals or water slides or whatever the uh, I think the, the actual real word is decal because it's a French word um, there's a video about that on YouTube as well I'm quite sad because I've watched it um, and not all decals are made e equal so some are different so these particular ones which are from uh, Microscale they're the people who make the uh, micro solar micro set that stuff there um, these um, you don't have to cut around them they they, uh, they are printed with just the decal so there's the carrier film doesn't extend beyond the um, beyond the decal beyond the, the, the motif that you're gonna apply so there's two sets there's two um, two stuff that you buy together micro set and micro sole now micro sole you can see it says number two mi2 um, that's kind of the although that doesn't smell it's the stronger of the two so uh, we're going to use micro set which is one of the blue bottle and basically what this does is it will soften your decal and um, so we are just going to apply a layer to the uh, to the surface that we're going to apply the um, the decal to now these particular ones uh, these decals literally take about 10 seconds in the in some warm water and then they're ready to go um, or not that you can see anything because it's all out of focus so I do apologize for that um, but the micro set will start to soften your uh, decals pretty quickly so uh, you have to be quick and this is really not um, advised that you sort of pull them around with uh, sharp tweezers um, because they will um, they will break and tear generally speaking on a smoother surface you'll be able to slide them around um, but with the bricks it kind of was was grabbing it a little bit uh, so we've done a few more um, and we're just going to adjust that very slightly really don't want to play with these too much because they do get soft now with my um sort of flat brush it's just um this yeah, just a dry brush um just dab that in and it kind of um pushes the um the deco into the pattern and then another uh, layer of micro set and uh and then we're just gonna let it dry and i will let mine dry overnight and that's it it's dry now you can see just where the in between the course of the bricks is where the uh, where the mortar would be there's a slight bit of silvering which is to be expected because it's uh, um, the, 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 they haven't sunk properly into that but that's not uh, not a not a problem with what we're doing here if that's an issue with yours just give it another coat of microset or microsol and uh, hopefully that will disappear so the thing you're seeing here is a thing called oil brusher now these are pre-thinned oil paint um, but for our purpose it's not thin enough um, we're going to use this to create the mortar effect and it's like um, like a pin wash if you've used a pin wash before we've done them before on the channel um, and this is for brickwork so we've got a, a mortarish color which is the uh, the buff and then that liquid in there is just a uh, it's just oil thinners it's got to be the proper oil thinners anything else doesn't work um, you can try this with enamels it doesn't work particularly well with uh, enamels and acrylics however you uh, you wet them down um, so oils uh, really are the way to go but you know give it a go and uh, I know people have done it and, and it seems to have worked but it's not uh, it's not ideal so this surface is uh, 
still shiny from the from the clear you need really a gloss surface and we're just going to dab it on once we've mixed up a, a really thin um, uh, solution of that oil and you just need to touch it on and the capillary action will grab it and uh, and take it into all the, uh, the and the joints between the bricks and people love to watch this on YouTube um, on uh, on Instagram uh, as well so once that's uh, fully dry again uh, overnight ideally if you can we are then going to give it a uh, a matte varnish so once all the brickwork is complete we need to uh, just sort of dress the scene a little bit um, now the base we're going for a concrete type look and I don't have a concrete type color uh, so this is just a beige and a gray mixed together and we need to cut around those uh, those little fallen bricks there and then I'm going to add some vegetation in um, and these are these are tufts from a company called Army Painter we've got them on the website they come in lots of different colors and shades um, this is just a not sure actually what this one is called um, but the tuft although this is the smallest tuft these are uh, this is too big these are really inexpensive they're like 70 I think it's 72 in a kit for five pounds 70 something like that so uh, not not particularly expensive um, but yeah too big for what we need and they come on a little sticky pad army paint suggests that you use uh, super glue or CA glue to uh, to put them into place but um, they don't stick too badly actually so the bigger one we're going to leave in the corner like that on its little sticky pad but the smaller ones uh, there is no more pads left on that so we're going to need to stick them into place with, uh, with some super glue now whenever you use super glue now um, I'll just have a piece of blue tape um, somewhere very obvious in front of me um, and then when I finish I can just peel the tape off and pop it straight into the bin um, I used to use pieces of card and then I'd end up putting my elbow in it and it'd be stuck to my shirt for the uh, for the next couple of weeks and I'd be walking around with it and people would laugh at me. Um, I think I was laughing at that, it just might be laughing at me in general. But anyway, whatever, um, you know, for my life. So um, a cocktail stick gets the super glue into the correct place there rather than trying to drop it out of the bottle, which is a... Um, I wouldn't advise that really. So there's the uh, a little bit there, and we've got another little bit to go, and I will pop that in between the uh, in the rubble. Why not? Now the other problem I get is uh, getting super glue on the on my uh, tweezers. I think I might have got away with it that time. that's those into place that's all done also from army painter we've got these leaves and I think these are actually real leaves um, oops, 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 oops. Um, but I put some super glue just little dots of super glue on the uh, onto the floor in the corner there and um, I'm sort of hoping that the leaves are gonna fall onto it I think they uh, they probably don't but anyway um, there you go so next thing is for our weathering powders now there's um, three or four different colors that we're going to specifically use on this one this is a uh, uh, chrome oxide which is this bright green um, and that's going to be like, like for algae and stuff like that and then we've got some uh, stone colors from Vallejo this one is called desert dust uh, which is the lighter of the uh, of the one uh, this is going to simulate things like broken plaster and just general dust and dirt really it's probably not quite as bright as it looks on the screen it's a uh, it's a little bit more sort of um, yeah desert colored I guess a bit more car key uh, next color up is um, natural sienna again from Vallejo part of the stone set or it might be actually light sienna my, my yeah, light sienna and then the last one is uh, 
natural sienna. It's just slightly shade darker. So with the green um, chrome oxide, um, really you can see that's a tiny, tiny amount to use. It's such a, a, a vivid green. Um, I'd really suggest you uh, put it on first and then you can uh, cover it up with uh, with weathering powders as I'm doing now, or just mix them together. But it just gives the idea, or if you look at you know, the bottom of uh, walls, um, external walls and uh, the, uh, the rain has splashed up and uh, moss and algae has started to grow up the side so that's just kind of that type of a effect that we're after there and then on the inside you can see we've, uh, we've already done a bit of the inside and a similar thing over in the corner there now there could be all sorts of uh, all sorts of things inside especially up in the corner uh, where different um, liquids and fluids might be splashed all over the place if you uh, if you know what I mean um, so yeah uh, even use the uh, the black in the corner there just to get it nice and uh, nice and dank that's a funny word isn't it dank but anyway uh, so just normal weathering powders and then we're using some of the stone colors now um, and that's just kind of uh, because they're going to be broken mortar and, uh, and so on some on the broken um, on the wall as well and use uh, you can see I'm just using a, a small amount and just kind of keeping it mixed rather than having just all of one color now again don't forget once you put your final lacquer on this the effect is going to go off ever so slightly um, so you will lose some of the effect and the, the, uh, the vividness of the colors so it may look a bit over the top at the moment but um, uh, as I say, the effect will be lessened once the uh, once the lacquers have uh, have done their job so with the with the chrome oxide you can see like I say the tiny tiny amount I'm really just trying to get a small amount on there um, and you can see that it does uh, it does show up uh, you know as a quite a bright green in the corner there um maybe there was a fire there at some point i don't know or oh, whatever the uh maybe it's oil but i think it's a fire definitely um because that sort of thing happens people have barbecues and uh uh whatever i suppose you have barbecues by the side of a railway line yeah maybe not actually that's a silly idea but anyway um definitely could have fire so uh yeah We've chosen fire and this is a humbrol um, black weathering powder it seems to stick much better than the uh, than the Vallejo one that I've got um, so uh, yeah I used the humbrol version for that now we're not painting too much of the front or not covering uh, too much of the front in weathering powders at the moment because there's uh, still more to go in. We're just uh, really concentrating on the back wall. So that's going to be uh, sort of obscured a little bit soon. So blue tape can only mean one thing. Out comes the super glue once more. I've got a couple of bits to, uh, to add in. And then we are pretty much done with this one. a couple of leaves um, sort of on the on the workbench right in front of me so I thought I'll uh, just see wasting them so I'll just pop them into place there we go a bit more target this time rather than the sort of uh, the random um, attempt from last time so just a dot of uh, super glue and then we'll pop the put the leaf on top leaf there as well so seems a shame to waste it and 
sounds typical of um palettes get everywhere don't they you just see them all over the place but anyway so just uh throwing a palette in there as well just for good measure Now this particular one um, has already been sold while I've been building it. I've been messaging um, a guy called Chris, who's hopefully watching this. Chris, um, this is yours. I hope you uh, hope it goes well on your um, on your layout. Look forward to seeing it with some of the other bits that you've uh, you've had from us in the past. Um, so yeah, last little bits to go are the. Uh, are the relay cabinets and uh, these have uh, again resin printed and um, just added oops sorry you knocked the camera uh, just added in um, some decals and a bit of graffiti and uh, paint and mess and so on like that and once that's um, once they're dry then we'll um, put some weathering powders around the front just to blend that in and that's us done and there it is on our back on our turntable and um well thanks for watching um i hope you've enjoyed uh um seeing how we do our brickwork and um we'll see you again on youtube very very soon and uh hopefully on instagram too um chris i hope you enjoy this uh one on the layout and uh we'll speak to you all again soon Bye for now.